Hello everyone, this is Phil from statisticsmentor.com. In this video I want to discuss the type of IV, otherwise known as explanatory variable, otherwise known as uh, covariate. I want to discuss the type of IV in a regression. Now there are three types, there are it's continuous, categorical being nominal, categorical being ordinal. Now if the IV is continuous we simply put it directly into the model. If it is nominal we know that we create dummies. If it is ordinal, right, this is the subject of this video, if it is ordinal it can be treated as either nominal, in which case you create dummies, and you'll have also seen that sometimes they treat it as continuous, in which case you put it directly into the model. So is that a right and wrong? Well, treating it as if it was not nominal by creating dummy variables is always going to be okay. The only thing is that if your ordinal variable has many, many categories, then you are going to have many, many dummy variables to set up, so many, many more parameters to estimate, and the more parameters you have to estimate, the less power your tests are going to have. So in other words, it has a detrimental effect on uh, testing. On the other hand, where if you treat it as if it's continuous, then you only have one extra parameter to estimate. But the disadvantage of this is that it is not always appropriate because if you treat it as continuous it means that going if um, the IV goes up by one unit for whatever value the IV already is then it always has a constant effect, constant impact on the DV which may not be appropriate. Let's illustrate in this example of a logistic regression. It's titanic data where the DV is whether the passenger survived the sinking of the Titanic. And the IVs are gender, which is nominal, age, and the class of travel being first, second, and third. So the class of travel, first, second, and third, that is ordinal. Okay. Now, in a previous video, we treated it, the class of travel, as if it was nominal, so we created dummy variables, and we had this kind of interpretation. So, second class compared to the first class, we can say the odds of surviving in the second class is 0.28 times the odds of surviving in the first class. If we compare the second and third, the odds of surviving in the third class is 0.38 times the odds of surviving in the second class. Now, let's fit the regression as if the class of travel were continuous. So if we look at the data here, class of travel, first, second or third, that's second class that passenger, third class passenger number 11 is first class and so on. Okay, to fit the model, we'll go analyze regression, binary logistic, transfer survived into dependent variable box, and then we want sex and age as covariates and we also want p-class passenger class which we're now going to treat as continuous and put it straight into the model and we'll look at the coefficients. Okay, so p-class that's a coefficient of minus 1.109 as a negative figure in logistic regression it means that the odds of surviving falls either that implies a probability of surviving falls as you inc increase the class by one so in other words somebody in the second class compared to the first class has a lower chance of survival and the odds for that is the odds ratio is 0.33 so we can say that we can make the following sentence 
we could say that if the class of travel increases by one, so it could be like going from first to second or second to third, predicted odds of survival changes by a factor of 0.33 holding other IVs fixed. So it means that from changing going from one to two, the factor changes by the odds of survival changes by a factor of 0.33 and by and it will be the same going from class two to class three. Now if we looked but this is treating as classes as continuous. Now if we look at when we treated uh, treated uh, class of travel as if it were nominal, we see that first compared to the second is 0.28, which is lower than 0.33, and second to third, odds came out at 0.38, higher than 0.33. However, taking into account the variability of the figure, we could say that they are pretty much consistent. So treating it as if it were nominal, treating it as if it were consistent, pretty much gives you the same results here. Because they give you pretty much similar results, if you had to choose a better, have to say which is a better model, you would say treating class as if it was continuous would be a better model because then you have only one parameter to estimate being the parameter just associated with class has just, just got the one parameter as opposed to as opposed to if we treated class of travel as if it were nominal, in which case you have two parameters as opposed to one, so you've got that one extra parameter to estimate. And to say again that models which have fewer parameters are preferred, all things being equal, preferred to models with more parameters. Finally, I end up with an observation. In papers, you, t you can s I've seen that if the ordinal IV has just a few categories, they tend to be treated as nominal. And if the and if there are loads and loads of categories for the IV, then they tend to be treated as continuous. So if you think about what I've just um, said there, that if we're taking the two statements together, we are, if there are many variables for the, many categories, sorry, for the or no variable, if we treat it as continuous, we just have the one parameter to estimate as opposed to loads and loads of parameters, which gets around the disadvantage of many, many parameters to estimate. And if the or no variable has only a few categories, we use, we <coughs> employ the nominal because it's only a few parameters, extra parameter then to estimate. Okay, so I hope this shed light on using I using ordinal variables as IVs. In short, using them as treating them as nominal by setting up dummies is always okay, except for but the thing is to watch for is that if there are loads and loads of categories, you can have loads and loads of parameters, which are going to reduce the power of some of your which you reduce the power of your tests. Treating it as if it were um, continuous can be problematic for interpretation standpoint because it implies that for any unit increase for whatever value of the IV currently stands at is always a constant uh, impact on the DV which may or may not be the case. Okay, well, hope that has uh, helped you.